Greetings once again, my beloved brothers and sisters, in the loving name of Jesus. Brethren, I've just been impressed this morning just to share a few words with you. Brethren, we are living in serious, serious times. And you know, brethren, listen, Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Beloved, listen, has our taste become so perverted that we will be inclined to criticize even the table of the Lord? Brethren, are we partaking so much as Seventh-day Adventists of the spirit of the world that our taste has become so perverted that we will be inclined to criticize even the table of the Lord? Do you know, brethren, that in the book of Isaiah, God says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil? Beloved, listen. The test for every Seventh-day Adventist is just before us. In Isaiah 3.25, the Bible says, Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. Isaiah 3.25. Why is Zion go going to lose her men in this war? That's what it says, brethren. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. In Testaments to the Church, volume 1, page 270, the pen of inspiration says, War lifts its helmet to the brawl. O oh God, protect thy people now. A day of heart-rending anguish, my beloved brothers and sisters, is just before us and we are sleeping we are partaking of the spirit of the world we can't even discriminate and differentiate between light and darkness right and wrong righteousness and sin of Jesus it was said I have loved righteousness and hated iniquity Have we got on the ice solve, beloved? Do we have the ice solve? Why are we dressing like the world? Do you know why Zion's men are going to lose out in this soon coming war? Of Isaiah 3.25 and Zechariah 14.2. God says, I'm going to gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled and the women ravished. God says, I'm going to gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Brothers and sisters, the next event that is to soon transpire is not the mark of the beast. No, it's the gigantic war. Are we sealed? Are we being sealed? Or are we still loving the things of this world? The seal of the living God will never be placed upon the foreheads of an impure man or woman. It will never ever be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious, world-loving man or woman. It will never be placed upon the foreheads of men and women of false tongues and deceitful hearts. It's time to cry aloud, my dearly beloved, and spare not. To lift up our voice like a trumpet. And to show God's people their transgressions. And the house of Jacob their sins. Turn with me brethren to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1 and verse 24. The Bible says. Therefore saith the Lord. The Lord of hosts. The mighty one of Israel. Ah I will ease me of my adversaries. Who are God's adversaries here. In Isaiah chapter 1. And avenge me of my enemies. I will turn my hand upon thee. And purely purge away thy dross. And take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. And thy counsellors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. The faithful city. Can you see brethren what the Bible says? What Jesus is saying? He says first he's going to avenge himself of all of his adversaries and then he says he's going to purely purge away thy dross 
To whom is God speaking to, brethren? Because after God purely purges away God's people's dross, notice what he says. Afterward, verse 26, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. It's after God purifies the church that the church is going to be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. To find out, brethren, that this is indeed the church. Look at the next verse. Verse 27. Zion, the church. Isaiah 51, verse 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens, lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, thou art my people. Zion is God's people. Look at verse 27. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and judgment begins in the house of God. 1 Peter 4, 17. The time is come when judgment must first begin at the house of God. God's going to purely purge away Zion's dross. Afterward, she shall be called the city of righteousness, the holy city. Zion's going to be redeemed with judgment, which begins in the house of God. And the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking to my Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters right now. Brethren, we need to wake up. We are conforming to the world and we will not be prepared. We will not endure when the test comes upon us. We're not going to endure the test. It's, we need to separate ourselves from sin and sinners. Jesus was pure, undefiled, separated from sin and sinners. That's what it says in the book of Hebrews. Separate from sinners. The only time Christ mingled with sinners was when he wanted to save them. Brethren, we cannot walk hand in hand with the world and expect to escape the judgment in the house of God. Look at verse 28. Isaiah 1 verse 28. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. That's verse 27. Look at verse 28. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. Brethren, we need to understand this verse. Verse 28. God says, and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. What is the difference between the transgressors and the sinners? We know that first John chapter 3 verse 4 says, sin is the transgression of God's law. You see, to transgress is to sin occasionally. But the sinners are those who sin as if it was second nature to them. They are sinning willfully every day so what God is saying those who sin occasionally and those who sin as if it was second nature to them that sin continually both those who sin occasionally and continually both will be consumed and destroyed when the judgment shall begin in the house of God. Can you see why now, brethren, God says it's only those that overcome temptation that will be sealed? Unto him that loved us and has washed us in his blood from our sins. Jesus does not save anyone in their sins, beloved. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I am talking to my Seventh-day Adventist brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we are not prepared. What a fall we have to meet and how unprepared we are to meet him. We are not prepared, beloved. We are going to be lost unless a decided change takes place. Now. Now. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Now is the day of salvation. Today, right now. 
Many will be lost while still desi desiring to be saved. Why? Because they procrastinate. Like Felix, they say, go away, Paul. And when I have a more convenient season, I'm going to call for you. That's what we say to the Holy Spirit. That's what we say to God's precious Holy Spirit, beloved. Oh, my brothers and sisters. I think my battery is conking out on me here. Beloved. My beloved brothers and sisters. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. Otherwise, Zion is going to lose her men in the war. Why is Zion going to lose her men in the war? According to Isaiah 3.25, because when you read Isaiah 3, it talks about the daughters of Zion, the sisters in the church, walking and mincing as they go. They are conforming with the world. They are dressing like the world. They are eating like the world. And there are brothers who, who still want to marry these sisters. Why? Because their taste has been perverted. And that's why Paul says in Romans 12. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let God's power of his word, the Holy Spirit, cast down every evil imagination. Let us be converted. Beloved, beloved. Ezekiel 9 is about to be fulfilled. The slaughter of Ezekiel 9 is about to be literally fulfilled. And we are sleeping. Unless a decided change takes place, a revival and reformation in our souls, we are going to be lost. Brethren, I'm going to have to leave it there. My battery is, is running out on me. Beloved, listen. I love you, brethren. We need to be converted. The judgments of God are about to begin in the house of God with Seventh-day Adventists. My sister, do not dress up like the world. Do not put your flesh on display. Do not put your flesh on display. So that brothers can lust after you. Wake up. Otherwise you're going to fall in the judgment. In the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. And my brothers. Do not be so foolish. Allow Jesus to, to transform your taste. So that when you, when you desire a woman. You're going to desire a virtuous woman. A woman that loves the Lord. And that dresses and is clothed like the woman of Revelation 12 that was clothed, fully clothed with the sun, with the light of God's righteousness. Brothers and sisters, going to have to leave it there. I love you so much, brethren. Messages is a solemn message, but we need to wake up. If we don't wake up soon, we're going to be eternally lost. Wake up, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, thy holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee, the uncircumcised and the unclean. God bless you, brethren. I love you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen.